I was actually getting ready to go on a trip. And I came to a stoplight at an intersection in Norman, and I noticed this strange shape just on the other side of the stoplight. And I sat there looking at it. And as I watched it, it moved. It stood up, and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's a puppy. As the light turned green, I watched in horror as a big dually truck hit the puppy with his driver's side tire. The puppy flipped over, hit the ground, but miraculously stood up. At this point, I had kind of come through the intersection. The driver of the truck paused and then took off again and hit the puppy with the passenger side tire of his truck. The puppy again hit the ground, rolled over, and stood up, but he was able to scamper off. Luckily, there was no traffic in the other lane. Otherwise, the outcome would have been very different. And I got out. There was a gentleman that was standing there, and I asked, you know, is this, is this your dog? And he said, no, it's a stray that's been around for a while. He's been stealing my dog's food. I said, listen, you've got to help me get him into my car. If anybody comes around looking for him, he'll be at this, at this particular vet. So he helps me get the dog loaded into the car. As I'm driving, I hear this noise and I look and in my center console, there's the puppy's face. He's climbing up from the back seat and now he's in between the two seats and then he climbs up and he lays in my lap and just looks up at me. I'm like, oh, you know, you poor dog, it's gonna be okay, it's gonna be okay. I get him to the vet and uh, we get him checked out and thankfully, miraculously, the vet says that he's okay. She said, if he can urinate, then we know that there's, there's nothing wrong on the inside and, and if, he, if he can't, then we've got other problems. I said, okay. I'm kind of knowing that I've got a trip later in the day. I'm like, well, I'll take him home and I'll figure out what to do after that. So I get him home and, and I'm getting ready for my trip and I'm trying to figure out what to do with him. And, you know, kind of in between all of that, I'm chasing him around in the backyard going, potty, potty, <laughs> potty, you know, like, like this dog understands <laughs> what I mean. But uh, I just really wanted him to go. I wanted to know that he was okay. I wanted to know that I was leaving him, you know, safe and, and sound. I go about getting ready for my trip and I had gone in into the bedroom and closed the door to change clothes and I came out and there he is looking up at me standing over a giant puddle of pee and at that point I can't fight it anymore. I, I just am in love with him and decided that if we hadn't found his owners by the time I'd gotten back that I would definitely be keeping him and I decided to name him Rocky because he was down but he wasn't out. You know, he's carried that attitude with him his whole life. He is a fighter. You know, I just find myself falling in love with him over and over again every day, watching him as he ages. After I rescued him, his legs didn't work so well because he had gotten hit by the truck and, um, you know, had to lay down to eat. And so now we're kind of coming full circle where with his age, he's having a harder time standing. His legs don't work quite as well. So. Um, you know, a lot of times he'll lay down to eat much like he did after I, after I first rescued him. And, uh, it, you know, that, that's, that's hard. Uh, that, that's hard to watch, but I would do it all over again. I wouldn't do anything differently. My other dog, Nico, wasn't very, um, appreciative of me, <laughs> of me bringing another dog home. But, um, you know, after a few years, he got over it. They were the best of friends. You know, once Nico got over being mad at me, of course, they were, you know, they were the best of friends and, and uh, very yin and yang. They definitely balanced each other out. But, um, you know, I didn't have much in the way of family, um, not very close to my family. And so Nico and Rocky really became that for me. They became my support system. You know, they were they were what I could depend on, and they really taught me about unconditional love. They gave me so much. Rocky still, even though he can't hear very well, when he sees me come in the door and he realizes it's me, he picks himself up off the floor and he just, you know, trots over to me and is so happy to see me. He greets me with his deep and loud bellowing bark and lots of sloppy kisses and it just they make everything better they make everything better it just they love you no matter what when my husband and I met I told him I said I'm a package deal I come with a Nico and a Rocky 
And actually, I also said I come with a Gina, who is my best friend. And, uh, you know, he he knows, and he's a very good sport about it, but he knows that Nico and Rocky were my first loves. They were my first true loves, and, uh, and he's okay with that. <laughs> if you're not an animal lover, you might not get it, but I encourage everyone, if you can, to open your heart to an animal, whether it's a, a dog or a cat or a mouse or, you know, whatever. Open, open your heart to them and, and feel that truly unconditional love. It's just, it changes your life, changes your perspective on things.